Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me is Sri Kumar Kandanji and we're going to be talking about Modi's interview to a Tamil channel in Tamil. Was it really in Tamil? That's one thing that we'll be looking at. Was it artificial intelligence? We're going to be looking at that too. As also, what is happening in Tamil Nadu as this Kachativu is now suddenly come and occupied front and center position with the DMK. In fact, the Dravida party is downplaying it. They are trying to make their level best to not allow any talk about this in their channels. So let's welcome Sri Kumar Kananji. Sri Kumar Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar, sir. So Sri Kumar, I, I watched with interest this interview of uh, Modi to a Tamil channel. And before that, there was a certain amount of build up, you know, Modi swagger, style, walking and all that stuff, you know, with, with Veshti and with a, a towel and all that stuff, usual stuff, right? It's a, it's like, you know, you barcha walking, if you will. But at the end of the day, I felt a little bit underwhelmed. What are your thoughts? Even I felt so, sir. Though, uh, as you rightly mentioned, the costumes were right. Uh, everything was there, but that uh, something what... What needs to be there was missing. Uh, either the way of questioning or the way he answered, uh, the crucial issues being touched. There are so many other things has to be also touched, but uh, it was a, only a routine interview, uh, but something more could be done. That's also I feel so in that way. Yeah, so what I felt was having watched the conversation between him and Bill Gates, where it looked like, it looked like, the speech, see, Modi is conversing in Hindi and Bill Gates is asking the question in English. And the thing is happening almost in real time, immediately. It's like conversation in two different languages. So how is Bill Gates able to understand Hindi? We know he doesn't know Hindi. So that part, I thought what was happening was that there was artificial intelligence, whereby it was translating Hindi into English in real time. That's not very easy. It takes a lot of horsepower, CPU cycles. It is doable, but uh, the technology is with Microsoft, by the way. Microsoft, a few years ago, had a Skype conversation between school students in Seattle speaking in English and students in a school in Spain who were speaking in Spanish. And, and this was, so the Seattle kids heard it in English and the Spanish kids heard it in Spanish. So this was, uh, this was an experiment that Skype said when it was a hugely successful one and so on and so forth. So I thought maybe something like that is what will be there in this interview also. Whereas what ended up happening was it was simply voiceovers. So I think the channel tried to do two or three things. First of all, um, I have a premium account, which means that I don't get to, I don't need to watch the videos on YouTube. These, the ads were embedded inside the video itself. There's, there was no way I could stop it. It, it went on for minutes. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? I'm, I'm like, you. I, I thought I had lost the channel. Sometimes what happens is YouTube will navigate away from this to something else. I thought I had lost the channel, but no, it came back after five minutes, ten minutes. So I think it was also a shameless exploitation of a prime minister's interview to try and further their advertising revenues. Whatever it is, I think it was a lost opportunity. There was no AI in it. There was no AI in it. I hope such things don't happen in future. That's my take. Uh, Sri, please feel free to add. Yes, actually, sir, if you remember, uh, Prime Minister Modi is, uh, you know, very good in uh, public posturing, messaging, as well as, uh, you know, taking it forward towards uh, election era. If you remember, in 2019, he did the same for uh, with uh, uh, Akshay. Uh, he made an interview and it was a very nice hit uh, uh, during the eve of the elections, so that one-to-one -one interview with both of them sitting together in the Prime Minister's bungalow and asking questions. But here, as you said, Bill Gates was a nice one, I could say, uh, comparing with uh, the, the uh, channel of uh, Tamil channel. But uh, the Tamil channel, the real problem was this, was this was the first channel he opted to give a, a one in a one to one interview that too during the election season. And uh, he could have thought that uh, giving an interview to a Tamil channel, which will uh, you know, give his uh, public posturing specifically with related to elections versus first phase where Tamil Nadu is more focused. But I still feel uh, the euphoria, that, that, euphoria, that, that, was, uh, that euphoria was missing. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the, we feel a contentment, we feel a fulfillment. Whenever we see an interview that 
it was uh, nice in all aspects the all set of questions were covered 360 degree and the prime minister also tried his level best to answer every possible questions with the best of possible uh, knowledge as well as to his wisdom that was not there the questions were usual it is a more cosmetic interview that's what i feel so and as you rightly pointed out the ai could have been that voice over instead of that voice over when we mention that ai it has to be used it's to the fullest extent otherwise it will be like a patch up work uh, what we see what we see now and, and see it hyped also like the first thing he did in the run up teaser he said like arambikalama uh, says oh so he is really going to speak in tamil right yes. so this is all <laughs> small small things where you put the hook and tease you in and then find out that well it's just another voice over interview in fact sometimes what you can see is the underlying hindi original also going along not sure if this is the format that should be followed by modi ji this is not what i would call at least don't say it's an ai for those of us who live mm -hmm. eat and breathe this stuff we know it is not artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is something else and when it works it it's breathtaking spectacular because people will be having a real conversation two different languages but the viewer will be listening and watching in the language that he or she is comfortable with that's what is the real thing that has still long ways to go in fact sanskrit has a very big role to play in something like this if a software has to real time translate between x language to y language you have to have an intermediate language which can capture the essence of everything the original guy is saying the accent the the emphasis put it in capture that and then relay it back in the newer one where the emphasis might be slightly different you know like for instance i'll tell you we in we in india right nothing wrong we we tend to say you are going no so sometimes that no is no is just a filler so yes so so these kinds of things have to be added also that's where it becomes really spontaneous anyway that's our two cents on artificial intelligence in fact Tamil Nadu, to add, yeah go ahead importance of sanskrit more germans they have identified the you know uh, value of sanskrit more who are the, you know the best people as far as uh, the uh, people who wanted to do the research in that specific this topic if my if my member if my in, uh, uh memory is right the germans are the first one who are doing in the uh, research in sanskrit i believe very true see the the sanskrit is the only language that can capture everything about a language so that it can be rendered in a different language very easily so there there's a fair amount of work that is going on i'm not sure how the microsoft skype team did it but again we, we will find out this is not going to be in the labs for too long it will be in in the marketplace especially think about you know doing business with somebody who is in a different land where you pick up the phone on talk on whatsapp you are speaking your language other person is hearing his language and he replies in his language you are hearing back what he said so that that some that is going to be something that's going to happen it's coming to a smartphone near you then let's take a look at the impact of this speech uh, across the state how did you think the people received it what were your thoughts on that actually i should say it was uh, uh, mid, uh, fair enough it was uh, not at least more positive but it was uh, not also negative it was uh, okay okay and i see more of a positive comments from the interview is concerned because people see it uh, you know uh, be it the attire or be it the you know the sincerity what he attempted to uh, make it out uh, to answer the questions and there were some couple of questions where we can safely assume they are the good questions especially on the electoral bonds the usage of the government agencies of ed cbi on political opponents and uh, the uh, tamil people why the bjp is not getting traction in tamil nadu if where where it is getting more uh, you know political gains success in other parts of the country but not the desired level in tamil nadu so those are some good questions i believe and to the uh, to those questions he answered it well and uh, Uh, so the, if i see the reviews they are fair i should say you know um, one challenge that uh, bjp is facing in tamil nadu and it may be true of the rest of india also if you go to interior villages 500 population 1000 population 2000 population there usually is a headman of some some standing and that person really decides for the village and say okay you put vote to this party 
or this party or this party. Essentially, it's a symbol. They say put put vote to this symbol, this symbol, this symbol. To the extent that the symbol recognition has reached the deeper uh, villages, I would say the answer is yes. In that BJP symbol, which is Kamal Lotus, that has reached the interior. However, that doesn't automatically translate into votes. Um, my two cents observation is that while Tamil Nadu is also fairly literate, it may not be 100% literate like Kerala, uh, Tamil Nadu has a very keen political sense. And many people, even in the interior uh, villages, they were saying, we are not going to tell you who we are voting for. That's a very nuanced answer, right? Why should I tell you who I am voting for? So given all these conditions, we've been doing, you know, every week with Sriram Seshadri, I and he, we look at all the different tea leaves and say, okay, this candidate is doing better, could be doing well, and things like that. What is your sense of perception by just looking at, you are much more tuned into this game, uh, how, how BJP is uh, bearing, first in Tamil Nadu, and also there are some rumblings going on in Karnataka, even though filing date is still further away. Uh, lots of rumblings going on in Karnataka, your home state. You can touch upon that too. Frankly speaking, I should honestly admit it was a strange coincidence when you were mentioning about the village headman. This thought came to me a couple of days before when I was thinking about so many political happenings. Tamil Nadu is fairly a semi urban or a, a state where we have uh, all developed villages, we can say. The hamlets are more developed. And as you rightly pointed out, the village headman, the BJP should approach those village headmen. So and engage with them. That is the way they have to make the symbol and the party more, uh, uh, more popular. That's what I feel so. When you uh, specifically mentioned about this uh, village headman analogy, it, it, it actually it, uh, attracted me because I was thinking about a couple of days before. And as you rightly mentioned, the Tamil Nadu is having a large number of floating population, uh, sorry, floating voters. They make up their mind uh, not immediately to vote for a specific party unless it is a wave type of election. If it is a silent election, we can't make it out whom the uh, voters are voting for, unlike North India. Even the opinion polls, exit polls, it is more far successful in North India, not in Tamil Nadu. I still remember 1998 when uh, the Coimbatore uh, bomb blast that happened and uh, it was on the election season. People went and voted and uh, uh, so many election agencies, even popular uh, newspapers at this time, newspapers, those satellites were uh, very new at the time, satellite channels. So the news, popular newspapers and news magazines, they conducted exit poll. And you remember, you, you, you will wonder, about for 39 seats, 38 seats they gave for a DMK alliance. DMK, Tamil Manila Congress, CPA at that time. But when the actual result came, it was 30 seats for BJP ADMK alliance and 10 seats or 9 seats for uh, DMK TMC alliance. So this exit poll itself went wrong in Tamil Nadu. And the same is the case even till today. Even 2021 elections, so many people were telling about the ADMK could cross about 100 seats. Because the floating voters, the mindset and the uh, capacity to decide at the last two days, that is very unique uh, uh, character of the Tamil Nadu voters. They, they, they don't decide in a wave, under a waveless election, they want to decide on uh, much ahead. They will decide a couple of days before the voting. And the, uh, the voting of uh, you know, swings. The last time I voted for DMK, this time I'll vote for ADMK. That is their. Uh, their, their usual practice. And we should also see that the Tamil Nadu people are also, uh, they become new parties. It's not that they are very much obsessed with the old parties, the Dravidian parties. I still remember the Tamil Manila Congress, which came just on the eve of the election in 1996. It got good attraction among the people. They got the cycle symbol uh, very uh, recently uh, during the elections, and they made it very popular. See, for example, Vijay Kant, the DMDK party, he projected himself as the alternative to both DMK and ADMK, and he got a fairly good percentage of votes. Even today, the Nam Tamil party, that is a, uh, a separatist party, we can say, that party is 
slowly climbing up in its uh, what percentage from 2 percentage to 4 percentage it could touch about 6 percentage to 7 percentage so such type of new experiments also are uh, not new to tamil nadu coming to karnataka karnataka is a place where the rumblings and uh, karnataka politics is uh, can be separated so it is uh, it is in uh, as, as i rightly mentioned uh, for bjp they could have done it much more better but the advantage with bjp is congress is equally in a mess congress could have used this opportunity to uh, you know turn the tables against bjp as far as the lok sabha election is concerned the seat uh, allocation was nice for between the bjp and the jds candidate pickups are also okay to some extent but not in every every possible seat but there were rumblings within the second black leader there were forcible uh, retirement which were being provided take for example that uh, anand hegde was given forcible retirement uh, sadanand gowda was given so such type of things were there but still the congress could have sensed an opportunity but its own house is in disorder so but modi has a huge popularity i should say unlike tamil nadu unlike andhra pradesh uh, modi has a uh, great uh, popularity as far as karnataka is concerned so, and going by the track record so karnataka always stood with the uh, bjp when it comes to lok sabha it's not only now 2004 2009 14 and 19 it has always crossed the 20 seats so we can go by that same track record as an example as an yardstick and we can assume that the bjp will perform decently better uh, in karnataka um question for you uh, out of 28 seats uh, many were predicting 26 to bjp do you what are your thought do you think bjp will have such a high strike rate in karnataka no 22 to 23 it can get uh, but uh, 26 uh, i feel difficult because there are some seats like uh, we should see that uh, bellary uh, chitradurga uh, those seats are there bangalore rural uh, uh, those seats are there uh, and also like uh, some of the seats like uh, mandya we should see though they were given to uh, the jds yeah, yeah. that also form, yeah form part of the alliance so those seats how they voters they vote that also we should see but i should say the uh, bjp and jds are slowly picking up reason being uh 2019 i still remember jds and congress had a uh, alliance for the lok sabha but the workers and the second level leaders they are they that they are fighting with each other it was a completely lack of chemistry both the people who didn't want a jds even congress voters they voted for bjp and the jds voters voted for bjp so that is why you could feel you can see the sweep in karnataka this time uh both kumar swami as well as the bjp leaders they are having a sharing a good chemistry the chemistry will not come on one single day it it is a series of happenings so first you have to have an alliance then you should participate in each other's programs and giving statement in support of e- uh, each other's political stand and uh, so many things are there to convince the second level leaders as well as uh, party workers that both need to coexist so that is happening Uh, in uh, karnataka between bjp and jds you know uh, i can't help but observe that the dravida parties uh, you know built an effective language barrier see why do people like modi because he was a great communicator he knows exactly what phrase to use in which region of the country for maximum effect we miss all these things we laugh with him we think with him but we also miss the some of the, if you take a step back and look at the nuances why did he use this particular word because that word is used in that particular area so that localization of hindi right. also he takes he very effectively he communicates now karnataka karnataka because it was under the rule of all these sultanates and all that stuff their hindi is understood by everybody so modi's connection is instant whereas in um, in tamil nadu that is a problem these guys have effectively erected a barricade so now that to break that barricade of course somebody like annamalai has managed to effectively communicate this new thing that they have taken up in the last couple of days is kachati which they know is the soft underbelly of dmk because they can't now say that you know we never were for it and things like that so this has been they have been caught on the back foot no doubt about it but what 
kind of an effect will that have on the electorate in your opinion yes actually uh, mentioning about the uh, communication gap as you rightly mentioned uh, modi is an uh, is a master in communication so whenever he goes and address any election crowd you could uh, notice that he will uh, uh, he will use uh, local phrases and he will all, also invoke the blessings of the local deities uh, be it the you know the family deities or the village deities or the deities of that particular area he will invoke the you know blessings of them he will remember the uh, freedom fighters and uh, those uh, uh, you know uh, 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 eminent personalities who were born and brought up in that particular area he will remember them he will pay tribute to them and then he will uh, take his communication and uh, in between he will touch the local issues he will try to grab the attention of the you know voters he will know where the voters uh, they get engaged where the voters get bored so he will touch upon those uh, specific topics so he is a master in that communication so as far as tamil nadu is concerned the real problem is uh, the uh, eclipse of the national parties see even in south india we should say so wherever there is a space for national parties like congress there is also an equal space for a party like bjp because there is a nationalist platform is still there take for example kerala kerala still has communist and congress so bjp has no problem though it may be uh, not getting that much vote percentage but its vote percentage is slowly rising it is uh, touching about 18% and it can even touch 20% this time so even for example karnataka congress and bjp we cannot say that no karnataka is equally a language uh, 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 liking state they like their mother tongue more they give respect to the mother tongue kannada more than hindi and other language but still see because of the national party dominance is there in the form of congress earlier it was janata dal now it became jds now bjp even in andhra it was between tdp and uh, congress so there is still room for a party like bjp but the problem in tamil nadu is the eclipse of the national platform the congress itself has become a dravida congress the communist become then themselves become uh, dravidian left so they will they will not remember uh, their own idea ideologues i still doubt whether they are uh, uh, they are quoting marx and lenin but they quote evr and even congress they will they forgot kamaraj but they they still remember mr karnanadi so what i mean to say is so this because of the absence of this uh, a national platform it has given a room for these parties dravidian parties to run their narrative and to their own convenience and regarding kachatib as you rightly mentioned uh, this is one such election modi is attempting i i will not say it is very successful but he is an attempting to turn the tables against dmk on the eve of the elections so what his uh, mindset could be to quote the historical incident and put the dmk on the defensive and to the best possible uh, advantage to modi is both the dmk and the congress who are the prime reason for this kachatibu issue they are in alliance with each other and the dmk may say but you are digging a old issue uh, you are uh, digging out an irrelevant issue which is not at all related with this election but what about the dmk the dmk is very much uh, used to quote all the old and outdated issues be it the language division be it sanatana dharma issues be it the manu dharma manu dharma manu smriti issues or be it the you know brahmanical supremacy issues so they used to call, they used to quote all the outdated even mythological issues but they are defensive when they con- they are uh, uh, they are uh, they are uh, against a historical data now in this particular issue uh, dmk is struggling and it want to divert the dmk has an advantage is a unique character you should see the dmk will try to uh, be more offensive before you become offensive they will be the first offensive people and when they find that uh, your offense is more they will try to divert that uh, nuances is very much the art for dmk but this time we need to see how it goes but as far as election is concerned 
this will grab the eyeballs and headlines but it can't fetch votes it will put forth some issues in front of the people and if, uh, it can expose the dmk's hypocrisy particularly on uh, sri lankan issues fisherman issues uh, tamilian issues uh, those issues it can uh, expose the stand of both the dmk as well as congress but electorally i doubt whether it can fetch votes well this could be one of the many missiles that he might be firing because i know for a fact that there are more revelations about dmk corruption that is going to be coming uh, i'm told on the 14th of april there's going to be a big one just few days before electioneering stops and uh, that might you know really shake things up so let's wait and see i mean bjp is really going hammer and tongs against the dravida parties and uh, this th that's good i mean at the end of the day uh, this is not an easy bastion to break into and and they are doing everything they've got they are throwing all their weapons in let's wait and see how this plays out uh, sri kumar thank you so much for sharing uh, your thoughts on these topics we'll be back again next week and we had to change the timing on this one because of some technical constraints thanks once again sri kumar namaskar thank you namaskar jai hind